I'm a mother, I'm a scientific consultant, uh, I'm a teacher of many years, too many years, <laughs> don't do the math. Um, I'm an environmentalist and an active blogger. I also write, I write actively. I write short stories, novels, um, articles, essays, that sort of thing. I always wanted to write um, somewhere in there um, toward high school. I took this uh, SAT exam or something like that, which, which basically intersected your interest with your abilities. Does any, anyone remember doing something like that? And, you, and then you go to uh, the social worker in the school and then they let you know after the results yeah. what the counselor, thank you. Uh, maybe I went to the social worker too <laughs> for other reasons. <clears throat> Just <clears throat> um, and they would basically go over the results with you and then you would, they basically, you know, it would pop out the other end. They'd say, this is what you should be when you grow up, that sort of thing. Well, it was like, like this, it was like a chart. And they had all the various jobs on there, like, uh, oh, plumber. Oh, career tips. Uh, yeah, art, uh, writing, or a writer. Uh, let's see, computer geek. Well, they didn't call them geeks back then. <laughs> uh, sergeant in the army, and machinist. Okay, so probably, probably um, they probably picked the the twenty top things that you scored in. You know, in both interest and ability, and then um, <clears throat> they'd score them right. And funnily enough. Sergeant in the Army was the highest. <laughs> <clears throat> I, know, I don't know why that is, but machinist was pretty high. Computer was pretty high. Art was not so high. Plumber. Computers when you were in school? Yeah, they had computers when I was in school. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, plumber, I was just kidding you there. Um, writer. Writer was way down there at the bottom. Well... It makes sense. I didn't read. I couldn't spell. Um, still, somehow that stuck with me, resonated in, on some level. And at the same time, I got really involved in uh, the environment. I became an activist. I, I, I figured I was going to fight pollution and save the world. Um, I was young. <laughs> Actually, I still think that way. but. Um, so at the end of high school, I decided I was going to go, when I went to college and university, I was going to go into sciences. The problem was I didn't take science. Uh, I took typing instead. I thought that was far more handy. I had a problem with a teacher, actually. Um, so I needed to challenge the exam uh, to get into biology, which I did, thankfully. And then I went into biology in, in university and got my degree. And I became an environmental consultant. And a teacher. I, I taught uh, science and a bunch of courses. But the writing, my passion for writing, was still there. Um, and that's not to say I didn't write, because I did. I produced all these exciting, thrilling, scintillating papers, scientific papers. Right? And, uh, and reports still using my artwork in some cases to produce covers. But um, not exactly the kind of stuff that I really wanted to, to write. I mean, here's, 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 a, here's an example. Glass microscope slides were submerged for two to six week periods at selected sites in the small spring Fred, Fred, the stream near Lenoxville, Quebec. Does anybody want more? <laughs> Okay, not exactly, not exactly riveting, but it, it, it uh, still spoke to, to my heart in terms of what was important um, uh, because it was environmentally important and I was doing, doing important work. Um, still wanted to be a paperback writer. So I naturally went from writing this kind of stuff to looking at the lay market of nonfiction.
and um, that's the magazines, th those kind of stuff, magazines, anthologies, whatnot. And um, my first article was in a, in a magazine called Shared Vision, and it was in keeping with what I was doing, it was about environmental citizenship. So there you go. So I took what I was doing in the sciences and melded them with, with my writing. Um, and I went further with, uh, got into a couple of uh, travel magazines. Here's one in Pacific Yachting that I did for about a trip that I'd taken um, in a lovely boat. And of course, I like taking pictures, so I added that in as well. In fact, I think I got paid more for the pictures than, than for the article. Oh yeah, I did get paid. Writing, that's one good way of getting into the writing field, even if, you are, if your love, which mine was, was for fiction. Um, and that's because there's so much nonfiction out there. Most people actually read nonfiction, if you think about it. They're interested in learning something, how-tos, that kind of stuff, reading the newspaper. They're voracious for picking up information. We live in an, in an information age. So there's a lot of market out there for you to get into. So it's, it's not that difficult, as difficult as fiction, to, to write this kind of stuff. Um, one neat way of breaking into fiction uh, along the same lines is to write short stories or anything short. You're a poet. Same, same sort of thing. The reason for that is because um, here's a fiction magazine, or here's a fiction magazine, an early one. They put a lot of stuff in there. So each one, they, they carry a lot of space for a lot of short stories. So the likelihood of you getting a short story into a magazine, and there are a lot of magazines out there, um, again, is greater than, than publishing uh, a book, per se. So that's why they say it's a, that's one of the good reasons why, uh, for looking at the short story market if you're going to start your career in, in fiction. Um, there's a couple other neat things that you can do with the short story market, too. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about that. This one, for instance, is uh, How to Sort Tales. It's a small magazine. It's bought, probably got a circulation of 500, if that. Uh, I got my story virtually yours in it. Um, but what I did was I then marketed the reprints, which you can do same story over again in a different market. And I stumbled upon a foreign market. This magazine is a magazine out of Poland. Now a Fantastica. And they're looking, they're just voracious for stuff from North America that they will then translate for you, like Eng an English story that they will then translate. Um, and this is the same story. And uh, Virtually yours, except it's Virtualny Dwarska. Vincent Skelly has gouded Viznit Blez Zid Protniskit. I sure hope that's the same thing as this. <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, there you go. Gorgeous. It's a gorgeous magazine. It's glossy. It's got great pictures and great circulation. And there you go. Your name gets out. Um, so that's what happened, is, is I just kept writing stories, and they kept going out, and eventually I did manage to publish something bigger, which is what I was really after, publishing fiction. Um, and ironically, I went in through the internet. Uh, it was an e -zine. It was an e-publication. And that's, again, a little bit easier than print publications, a traditional one, although that, in fact, is changing now as well. Um, the e-market is, is becoming very popular. So I did get my stuff out um, and I, I managed to publish and I'm very happy. 